as of this point, we have gone through finding zeros from intercept or factored form. We have gone through finding zeros from standard form and a few different ways to do that. What we have not addressed is how we find zeros from vertex form, although we have indirectly talked about this already. So down at the bottom of the page here, we're going to move into finding zeros from vertex form. And the way that we do that again is um, we're going to just reiterate something that we said a few pages ago, which is once again that the equation of the x-axis is y equals zero. Now why is that significant? Well actually before we get to why that's significant, let's just once again illustrate that every point on the x-axis will have, as it shows here, a y-coordinate of zero. That is sort of the definition of the x-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal line on which all of your y-coordinates are zero. Now again, why is that significant? Well, remember that if y equals zero means you are on the x-axis, uh, when you are on the x-axis, that means you are, if, if you're talking about where a graph hits the x-axis, for instance, this line right here hits the axis here at point A, then you are talking about the x-intercept of a graph. So again, in the case of a quadratic that is graphed as a parabola, again, if we're talking about the points on the x-axis where again y equals zero we are talking also about the x-intercepts all three of these things are so far synonymous and remember that x-intercepts are also synonymous with our zeros or roots so to to follow this line of reasoning if we see a graph and we want to know where the roots or zeros of that graph are. We just look at the x-intercepts because the x-intercepts are on the x-axis and we know that on the x-axis all of our y values are zero and again that's the definition of a zero. The x values that make y equal to zero. We went over all of that on the uh, second or third page of this section in a previous uh, part of the quadratics videos. So what do we do when we want to find the x value where a certain function hits the x axis, what we do is we throw in y equals zero. That's the, the simple way to think about this. If we want to know where a function hits the x axis, at what x value a function hits the x axis, basically what we would do is we would simply make y or f of x, again those two are synonymous, so we make y or f of x equal to zero and we solve for x. So for instance, in the case of this linear function right here, we're gonna do another linear function on the next page, but we'll start with this one. If I wanted to know where this linear function hits the x-axis, in other words, if I wanted to know the coordinates of point A right here, all I would do is set y equal to zero, and then I would start solving for x, and I would get negative one equals two x, dividing by two, dividing by two, I get x equals negative one half, and that makes pretty good sense. We've got negative one half comma zero. That looks about where that point is. Negative one half would be the x-intercept. Negative one half would be the zero of this linear function. It would be the root of, of this equation, two x plus one equals zero. So again, we throw in zero for f of x or y, and we solve for x. At the top of the next page, we're gonna do another linear function just to get our feet more wet with this. So in example 16, you can probably do this on your own. I would pause the video and try it on your own. In the xy plane, what is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept of this line? 2x minus 3y equals four. This question is as simple as 2x minus three times zero equals four. Again, remember, if we want the x-intercept, we make y equal to zero, and now we have two x equals four, we divide by two, we divide by two, we get x equals two. Two is the x-coordinate of the x-intercept of this line. Uh, by the way, if you wanna find the 
y intercept, you would just make x equal to zero. Uh, we talk about that in a separate section. Now, when it comes to quadratics in vertex form, and vertex form is reiterated uh, at the bottom of the previous page where we just were, this is vertex form. All we do, if we wanna find the zero in vertex form or from vertex form, we simply set f of x or y equal to zero. We do have to remember an important point that we've made several times in the quadratic section up until this point that when we're solving an equation in the form x squared or any variable squared equals some number or some expression, we have to account for when we do square root both sides, the fact that the x value could be either a positive or negative value. Again, we've talked about that in a couple places and that fact will come into play on questions like example 17, which we're gonna do right now. If you wanna try it on your own, pause the video. Example 17, in the xy plane, the graph of the function f shown above crosses the x-axis at a comma zero and b comma zero. The question wants the product of a and b. So really, the question is simply asking for the product of the two x-coordinates at the x-intercepts of this quadratic, of this parabola. So as always, when we want the x-intercepts or the zeros, we are going to make f of x equal to zero. So my equation becomes zero equals one-half x minus two squared minus eight. And most of you should not have too much problem solving an equation like this because it is pretty basic algebra. I'm going to first add the eight. Remember, I'm trying to isolate the x, so I'm gonna get rid of that eight first. By adding eight to both sides, I end up with eight equals one half x minus two squared. Further, trying to isolate that x, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two or divide by one half, same thing, in order to get rid of the one half in front of the parentheses there. So now I have 16 equals x minus two squared. Now, to further isolate the x, I do need to square root both sides so that I can get x minus two alone instead of x minus two squared. This is that slightly dangerous step where we do have to remember that when we are square rooting a squared variable or variable expression, as is the case here, we have to account for the fact that x minus two could either equal positive four or x minus two could equal negative four. And that is because if what is in here is four, well, four squared would give us that 16. If what is in these parentheses is negative four, well, negative four times itself, negative four squared, would also give us 16. So the two relevant equations here are x minus two equals four and x minus two equals negative four. I'm going to add a two to both sides here and I get x equals six. I'm going to add a two to both sides here. I get x equals negative two and therefore six and negative two are my intercepts. They are my x-intercepts, they are my zeros. Um, so these two points, a comma zero and b comma zero must be six comma zero and negative two comma zero. It doesn't matter whether the a is six or the b is six. The product obviously of a and b will be the same whether we do six times negative two or negative two times six. Both of those will give us a product of negative 12 and that is indeed what this question is asking. My answer here is negative 12. So that is how we generally are gonna find our zeros from vertex form. We simply replace the f of x or the y with zero, and then we use some basic algebraic skills, some basic equation solving steps to find the value or values of x, and we're done.